appear longer and leaner, attempting to look sexy. I felt insecure and stupid. He snapped away, moving around me, taking shots from above, on one knee, from the left, from the right. I was not easing into it. Remaining petrified, I squirmed uncomfortably, needing desperately to visit the John. After what seemed like forever, he ran out of film and set the camera down, refilling my water, my eyeballs now floating. He sat down next to me. In high spirits, he was enjoying playing host. Without warning, he moved in close. Reminiscent of Scotty Fitzgerald, the kiss was years of the wanting. Once again, it was not the kiss of my dreams. It was certainly not the kiss of my dreams. His lips were tight and dry. Geez, he was nervous too. He stood, pulling me up to join him, running his hands down my body. He kissed my face and my neck, as magnificent as it should have felt. I was too distracted, trying to compare myself to the feel of Pandora. Was he thinking that too? In my favor, I was younger and perhaps softer. I was 100% natural. Did that feel better or worse? As I considered, he put, my hands, he put his hands on my waist and lifted me up. I was sure I felt as heavy as an elephant. Ignoring my protests, he was unrelenting. I could see my mother looking at me. I could not. <laughs> I could see the bulge in his biceps and couldn't help admiring them. Somehow, my legs wrapped around his waist. <laughs> like a scene right out of one of Pandora's films, we were spinning, lips locked. The next thing I knew, he was carrying me into the other room, guiding me down on the unmade bed. Without ever detaching his lips from mine, he slid in next to me, I'm hiding my mother. Slowly working his way down my body, touching me, kissing me, I wanted to watch but felt shy. Closing my eyes tight, I prayed he did the same. On his return trip north, he took a pit stop at my suddenly exposed breast. Where was he going with this? Even though we'd known each other for a couple of years, regardless of the fact that he was going to be my husband, maybe because of that fact, I was not about to give it up this night. On his first date, if you can call it that, the more I pushed his hand away, the more I pushed his hand away from my pants zipper, the more firmly he persisted, whispering, yes, was he trying to convince him or me? Mm -hmm. I was determined not to sleep with him. But I wanted him for so long, for the first time, I'm sure he wanted me too. The spell was abrupt, abruptly halted when we heard keys turning in the lock. <laughs> Jumping out of bed, I raced for the bathroom, finally relieving the pressure in my bladder. I tried in vain to stop the flow that was pouring out of me. Willing it to be silent, I prayed that they were deep in conversation <laughs> and not listening to night at Falls. I hated going to the bathroom at any man's house when there was even a chance of being heard. When I cared about a guy, that fear was multiplied tenfold. When I finally emerged from the bathroom after futilely trying to put myself back together, Vincent was standing in the dining room chatting quietly with Frankie. As I approached, Vincent began the now familiar introduction. Frankie, I'd like you to meet Andy. We go way back. We went to high school together. I smiled away too focused on whether or not they'd heard me pee to care. I felt so caught, so shamed. I was sure Frankie was thinking, who's the slut? Instead he said, sure, I know Andy, what you been up to? I was flattered that he heard of me. After a lot, a bit of shop talk, even more so because he knew so much about my work. Vincent offered to walk me down to get a cab, relieved and saddened. I didn't want the night to end. I feared it might not ever happen again, but I wanted to get away from Frankie and the feeling that I was wearing a big scarlet A. I tried silently to convey that nothing had happened, that I pushed Vinny away, but my appearance implied otherwise. Once Vincent and I got to the elevator, our mutual discomfort cranked up to 11. Finally, he said, sorry about this. I'll call you. In all the time we'd known each other, we'd never talk about him. Let me give you my number, I said. Pulling a pen and paper from my purse, I jotted down my digits. When we got to the corner, and he hailed a cab, opened the curbside door, kissed me quickly on the cheek, and without another word, off I sped into the early morning light. I left unsettled for a number of reasons, not the least of which was that he put me in the cab, leaving me the cab. He'd suggested his place, and I used the term loosely, when we were less than a mile from mine to begin with my place that was truly my place, where we would not have come to such an embarrassing end. I suspect he wanted to feel in control. As much as, 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 he, as, as much as he scared the hell out of me, 
The fact that I was eight years older than him was perhaps a bit daunting to him too. Pandora or no Pandora. The cost of the cab wasn't a big deal. And it was. It said something about him. About what he thought of me. Or didn't think of me. Maybe he was just on Pandora Pilot, where money was never a thought, let alone a concern. Despite the awkward first kiss and the unfortunate conclusion, I envisioned the wedding we were destined to have. <laughs> Wondering how long it would take him to call me, or if he could call me at all. Fuck, what if he didn't call me? <laughs> <laughs>